My distinct pleasure to introduce John DeGraff. He's a documentary filmmaker and the co-author co of two books. I love it. Affluenza. Why Overcompensation is Killing Us and How to Fight Back. And his other book, What's the Economy For Anyway? He's the executive director of Take Back Your Time and co-founder of the Happiness Initiative. How many of you are excited about just being a part of the Happiness Initiative? Yes. Uh, we watched yesterday with how, how many billions of people on Facebook and Twitter and everything, the smiley face, the sad face, the smiley face. It's the number one most important icon that we all use, and all of my children use it in text messages. And you know, just one little happy or sad face can give us a lot of information. So the founder, co-founder of the Happiness Initiative, in early 2013, he was part of an international expert working group advising the government of Bhutan on its gross national happiness report to the United Nations. How many of you knew that there was such a thing as the gross national happiness report to the United Nations? Of course you knew because we're the most intelligent people in the world right here in this room. Yes. He is also taught at the Evergreen State College and the University of Washington. It is my distinct pleasure to please welcome John DeGraff of the Happiness Initiative. I'm going to do my happy dance. Everybody stand. Happy, 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 happy,
by 1991 than they had in 1968 in actual hours. And when you'd go around and talk to people, you used to say, how are you? And they used to say, fine. Now everybody said busy. Some uh, busy and some busy because it was a mark of pride and excitement. So I made that film and a few, couple of years later uh, was asked to make another film, my one little mini hit on PBS called Affluenza. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it uh, apparently reached a few people. It was really about over consuming in America and its impacts on uh, many things. And from that, I was then asked to write a book with the same subject. The third edition just came out, uh, hot off the press of, of affluenza. And of course, you've seen that word used now a lot in the news in relation to this case in Texas and other things, a rather different meaning than I had suggested in the uh, original film. But one thing about doing that is it, it got me back into being an activist and not simply a filmmaker. And so uh, I was with, worked with a group of people called the Simplicity Forum, some of whom actually lived here in Palo Alto. And we were trying to figure out what can we do in an active way to promote the idea of simplicity, of living in a different way. Five minutes, good, I'll, I'll pull it together. So, um, Anyway, we concluded that we couldn't just tell people, oh, don't consume. You know, that doesn't work. We had to say, you're making a sacrifice now, and that sacrifice is the time in your lives, the overwork and all of that. So we started in 2002 an organization called Take Back Your Time. You can find that at timeday.org, and I'm going to pass out a little flyer that has some of this. And I then became, after a while, a so-called expert on the subject of time balance. Um, most people who know me know that that is a myth, but nonetheless, I'm supposed to be that. And so, uh, <laughs> so in 2009, I was invited to Brazil to speak at the fifth international uh, gross national happiness conference. I'm not making this up. The fifth national, uh, international gross national happiness conference on the subject of time balance. That is because Bhutan has a set of domains of gross national happiness, of things that are, are considered important for happiness, and that's on the list. And one of those 10 domains is time balance, the idea that we're not constantly uh, in a rush. And in that meeting, I, became, I got connected with some people from Victoria, BC, who were actually evaluating the happiness and well-being of their community. And that led to returning to Seattle and starting a project called the Happiness Initiative, which you can find at happycounts.org. We worked with San Francisco State University's psychology department to create a 15, 12 to 15 minute survey, heavily, heavily scientifically va validated, which you can take and it will give you a score in all these 10 dimensions of well-being of life and you will see how you compare to the average American. And you can then think about where is my life maybe out of balance and what do I want to work on. We have found that the lowest score from 40,000 of these surveys uh, completed nationally in the United States is for time balance. Surprise, surprise. So uh, I have continued to work on this issue. Uh, I went to Bhutan in early 2013 uh, as a group. Uh, I'm going to just this. I think has a little diagram, it indicates the, uh, the domains of well-being, but it also indicates we had an, an issue among the people in Bhutan. There were two things. One thing was some people liked the term well-being and other people liked the term happiness. And the people who like the term well-being get all Ugh, when you hear the word happiness. It, it freaks them out, really, you know. And so this was this conflict. And the other conflict was between the people who said, it's all about policy, it's all about the conditions of life, and the people who, on the other hand, said, no, it's all about ch personal change. And a man named Enrico Giovannini, who is now the Minister of Labor in uh, the Italian government, came up and he drew a diagram for us on the sand with a stick. And he said, no, no, we have to understand that all of this stuff matters. That well-being is different from happiness. Well-being is really what we can measure objectively. How, health, for example, what is life expectancy? What is mortality and stuff? Happiness is how do people feel about those domains or conditions of their life? How do you feel about your health? My health is good. My health is poor. And in between, and well-being is the stuff of policy. And we need to change conditions in order to improve well-being. Happiness is on top of conditions. 
It's also a thing called happiness skills, which is the kinds of things we can learn like generosity and tolerance and mindfulness and uh, uh, self-discipline and all of these things that can translate those conditions into happiness. And so we've been working with that kind of model. What I'm doing now, this is the end of it, is uh, I am involved in a, in a campaign to uh, think of various ways that we can win time back for Americans. I, I know we all want to be innovative and produce more and more things, but I still th think we have to ask this question, what is productivity for? And when are we actually going to slow down a little bit so we can actually enjoy all of this stuff that we've done? So I'm involved in Washington State right now. We just had a bill in our state legislature that did not pass, but if it had passed, and maybe it will next year, would make us the first state in the United States to require paid vacation time for workers. We're only we're one of only five countries in the entire world that don't require paid vacation time. The other f four are Suriname, Guyana, Nepal, and Burma. So you, this is what I'm about, trying to win time for people and trying to get people to think about the whole of their lives, not just how productive they are, but <coughs> how much time they have to give to others and to things and so forth. So if you have ideas for me, uh, <laughs> you can find my contact on that, and I would love to talk about this. You can also check out our Happy Counts website and our Time Day website. And uh, yeah, my, my last thing is that I'm thinking we, we always talk about invention being the mother of, or excuse me, uh, necessity being the mother of invention. You've heard this statement, you know, that we have. But the other side to that is that, that invention becomes the mother of necessity. We make things and then we have to have them. And then we have to have more of them. And we have to figure out where's the balance in all of this. Thank you. Okay. Let's give, stay here with me, my friend. All Let's right. give John DeGraff an extra special happy, happy, happy hug from the audience. Big round of applause. OK, taking it on. Now, I want you to show us how happy you are by you get to pass out half to that happy side. Okay. This is his planetary happiness initiative with planetary boundaries and societal to happiness, all his websites. So who's happy about getting one of these right now? Because there's only a limited number. So the people that are in the front that were brave enough to sit in the front, they get to go first. And then they get to pass it back to that. If you don't get any one of these happy initiative ones, just go ahead and cry. OK, uh, yeah, because only the happy people, if you're, if you're sad, you cry, you're happy, you're happy. So, so we're very excited about this. I'm excited about that. And I am the happiest person you'll ever meet. I, I can tell. Oh, really? Yeah, it shows. OK, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Because I don't need to do any charts and graphs 9. or 9. anything 9. like that. 9. I'm a 9.9. Yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. And, and no mistake that everybody wants happiness and well-being. And I love the fact that, that some people don't like one word or the other. And it all means the same thing. Because yeah. my mantra is I'm the queen of joy, beauty, and passion. So just, all right. just be happy. All so again, one more hand for our happiness initiative today here at Stanford. Stanford University Design School. Thank you. Thank you.